Hello, Thursday podcast. Something, something, I didn't know. Hi, this episode is brought to you. Wow. <laughs> we didn't know any of the words. <laughs> what the people don't know at home is that before I started singing, it was 30 seconds of me and you staring at each other in the <laughs> eyes, playing some sort of game of who gets to start the podcast chicken. Hello, <laughs> Thursday podcast. This one is brought to you by Legal Zoom. Zoom, zoom, zoom. That zooms Legal Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> zoom kaboom that was legal zoom zoom you know some things like starting a business or protecting your family with a will aren't like others new year's resolutions but you can't afford to blow them off instead of less snacking and more exercise put them at the top of your list legal zoom helps you incorporate or form an llc with a simple questionnaire starting at just 99 dollars. that's damn right we started an llc and it was uh pretty damn hard and, and it cost pretty- a lot more than 99 dollars <laughs> actually when we did it so if you're considering Considering it, if you're just considering it at all, check out LegalZoom.com. Over a million entrepreneurs have done it already, and 90% of customers recommend LegalZoom to friends and families. You can also create a will for those of y'all planning on dying. (laughs) Which, honestly, everyone should be planning on dying. I mean, it's going to happen. Well, not to everybody, but... (laughs) What? Yes, that is correct. For those of you who will die, and there are some of you out there who are going to... You just can start. You can you can create a will starting at just sixty nine dollars, or even a living trust for those of y'all who are going to stay alive quickly and easily and get peace of mind and protection. That's right. There are no surprise fees, no hassles, no headaches. By the way, everyone does die. You shouldn't even be talking about immortality. And Legal Zoom's step by step process was created by a team of experts in law and technology. Yes, even- and remember, Legal Zoom <laughs> is not a law firm, and not everyone's going to die. But you can connect with a third party attorney. And provide you with self-help services. Some people will live forever. No, they won't. Not even your parents. From wills to business formation, trademarks, powers of attorney, if any of this stuff sounds like something you'd consider doing, much like you or should consider dying, go to LegalZoom.com. That is correct. My parents are never going to die for even more (laughs) savings. Type Jake or Amir into the referral box at checkout. Don't put off the things you need to do. Go to LegalZoom.com now. (laughs) That includes your parents because they too will die. Remember, you can use discount code Jake or discount code Amir, and you can get even more savings off all these awesome little business helpers. That is correct, you guys. Helping our podcast sponsors (laughs) helps the podcast, helps us. My mom's going to live forever. My dad's going to live forever. We love you guys. Remember to enjoy the show. Yes, enjoy this episode. Today's, I think, the January 9th episode. I believe that's Richard Nixon's birthday episode. And to honor the great, great president we had, uh, we made sure that things became absolutely 100% unequivocally real during the course of the tape. They finally got real. So enjoy this episode, everyone. Thanks, LegalZoom. You're listening to a brand new If That was soothing. <laughs> so why are you mad? I'm not mad. I'm soothed. <laughs> you don't know what soothed means. I feel then. <laughs> very soothed right now. No, you don't. I've never been soothed before. <laughs> it shows. Now I'm soothed. <laughs> she could have kept on going. That was short but soothing. <laughs> At least blink, man. You're you're grabbing <laughs> my ankle. To I'm man- soothed. <laughs> I just killed a person. Say, I'm soothed. I'm a soothsayer. <laughs> uh, that was Audrey, so- Audrey Scott from the band Sixie. I believe this is our first repeat. Sixie? Yeah, sick and then C. S I C K S E A. Oh, sick, like seasick. Yeah, oh, but the other way around. I think nice. she did a previous intro, so this is our first, I think, repeat. Well, how did her other one go? I have no idea, but I remember it was good. It was one of the ones that people recommended that I use for the best of. Oh. Very so, nice. uh, yeah, thanks again, Audrey, for that. Thank you. And this is If I Were You, the only advice podcast on the internet hosted by us. I'm Amir. And I'm Jake. And I'm soothed. And I'm soothed. <laughs> I'm incredibly soothed. I really am soothed. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. It's because we're in your room. Yeah, we're in my bedroom here. Yeah. By your room, I mean the downstairs room in my parents' house. By my room, you mean yeah, years old room. <laughs> yeah, my older brother's old uh, old room. Yeah. Surrounded by photos of, I guess, paintings of my Childhood brothers. Childhood photos of you guys. Yeah. Yeah. There's, um, I'm in this room, though. Are you comfortable? Your mom framed this, um, uh, the this, plaque like, of us. The plaque that we're on. So, yeah. So that's, so that's sort of like bit. my room here. 
Also, all those scarves on the door are mine. No, those are my mom's. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I've been parading around the room at night in them. Uh, everyone's hoping that we just stay in my parents' house forever because it's very funny to them. <laughs> like, when you tell people where you're staying, what do you say? Like, uh, people are like, oh, you moved out to L.A. Where are you living? I'm like, oh, I live at Amir's mom's house. <laughs> And like, Not my dad. Really? Yeah, I always call it. Your dad lives here. It sounds like your mom is a is an old maid. <laughs> but everybody loves it. They get a real kick out of it. Yeah. Um, I told your dad that I was gonna have to start bringing people. I was gonna have to start bringing girls back here. Right, because it's getting like a, this is almost day three at this point. Yeah, this is a fucking dry <laughs> and spell. I'm horny. Yeah, <laughs> that's what you told I, think I said dad. to your dad over dinner that I was horny. He said, uh, can you pass the hummus? Furthermore, I'm uh, I'm growing soothed and afraid that I'm horny. <laughs> Mr. Blumenfeld, I am uh, I am sad to say that I'm both soothed and horny. <laughs> at this point in time, I find myself horny, at soothed, this, scared, and alone. At this juncture, I am in your eldest, <laughs> eldest son's room, and I am becoming a cuckold <laughs> of myself. <laughs> Sir, help. But then he's like, you can just bring ladies in through the side door, right? Yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> so, I don't know. Helping so, you out. Off. Now all I need to do is find a girl who's willing to drive back to the valley with me. <laughs> hey, come on. <laughs> don't you dare put my parents on a Thursday blast. Not <laughs> after all they've never done. never deserve to be on blast. <laughs> <laughs> Let alone on a Thursday. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, how does this show work? What is this show? Do you want to try explaining it this time? Sure, yeah. We... Um, we oh okay i just you threw me you, you threw me a curveball i just took a second i watched one pitch go by but here and it we was go. called second strike curveball. looking okay well it's one strike and here's what it is we find people are who are in uh we find people <laughs> we find people who are who are two strikes here we go all right it's okay the, the tie inside. Tie we find off. people who are looking for advice they are in sticky situations <laughs> Terrible conundrums and awful life dilemmas. <laughs> they come to us looking for advice, and we do our best to give it to them. And how do people email us? They email us by emailing us in <laughs> if I were you show at gmail.com. And I actually don't appreciate this, <laughs> this quiz that I walked into. You're some sort of proud teacher. You think you taught me a lesson. But the only thing I learned is that I don't like you as much anymore. Because I went into this podcast thinking we were fucking equals, and you, <laughs> you condescending schoolmaster, you Mr. Feeney without the accent, <laughs> or the life lessons. <laughs> the worst type of Feeney imaginable. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's it. You're right. Thank you. And Nailed actually, it. fuck, now I feel good because yeah. I got the answer and Give, shit, I want to learn more. <laughs> Give it to me again, sir. No, I believe in myself. So uh, we're going to give these real questions today, fake yeah, fake names to preserve their anonymity. Anonymity. So uh, you got a you got a first name for this guy? Um, yeah, um, Pikachu. Pikachu, I choose your email. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Pikachu writes. Get out of Yair's room. So, <laughs> you don't deserve to be in his room. <laughs> on my pull-out couch. Absolutely not. <laughs> With my flower duvet. <laughs> All right, here we go. Ready? Mm -hmm. Pikachu writes. I got dumped by a chick because she lost feelings for me. Huh? Huh? <laughs> he wrote, huh, not me. <laughs> I got dumped by a chick because she lost feelings for me. Huh? She said she just wanted to be friends, but now she says she's still trying to get over me. And so she keeps asking to hang out as friends, but bails on me and ignores my texts every time we're supposed to hang out. Then she texts me back days later, completely disregarding the fact that she flaked on me. I asked her why she was ignoring me, and she said she was making me mad on purpose because it was her defense mechanism for, for not feeling sad. WTF is going on. I don't know. I want to keep just being friends with her, but her actions lead me to think she doesn't want to kick it with me. What do I do, guys? Thanks, Pikachu. What a confusing woman. Yeah. She really let you in on the process, though. I guess it's my defense mechanism. <laughs> Since uh, I don't give a shit about you anymore. What a mean thing to do. But it is very uh, honest at the very least. Well, not, she's sounds like a little jerk. It made me you mad. Break up with someone because they don't you don't have feelings for them. Yeah. <laughs> And then that's it. You don't. If you break up with someone, you can't be like, "Let's hang out," and then cancel on them, and then hit them up later and be like, "Let's let's hang out," and then say, "I'm sorry, I ignored you." That's a defense mechanism because I'm not sad. 
it does sound like she doesn't want to kick it with you. But I don't even understand why you're wasting in like your energy trying to figure this out. Because he wants to get back together with her on some level. But what you need to figure out is that she sucks and that you don't want to kick it with her. She doesn't make the, deci- this, the decision. She doesn't get to be like, I don't know if I want to kick it with you. Like, no, you decided when you broke up with me that we don't kick it. Yeah. And now I kick you to the curb. <laughs> I kick you in the face. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Oh, okay. Kick her to the curb. Not physically, not actually. Metaphorically. Just metaphorically. But isn't this how it happens so often? It's just like, we're going to break up, but uh, don't worry. I still want to be friends. Okay. So then you realize, oh, maybe it's not best to be friends right away. Right. Well, I don't think it's ever good to be. Why do you break up with someone? Because you're not friends with them. Well, you could be friends, no, but you not can't. necessarily lovers. That's, when you are lover, lovers with someone, if you're in a relationship with someone, you that is your best friend. You spend all your time with them. You open up to them. You learn about their life. You tell them about your life. You guys have a connection, a sexual connection, but also a mental connection. An emotional an connection. An emotional connection. You guys are best friends, and you don't get along. You break up. That means that's not your friend. You can't just be friends. You're not friends. <laughs> we aren't friends anymore. That's what breaking up is. It's cutting off the friendship. I decided to Two things. One, I don't like fucking you. And two, we're not friends. And usually the breakup happens after the I don't like fucking you anymore. And now no, it's you just always the- like fucking. That's the, that's the main problem. <laughs> so you still wants- like fucking, but you don't want to be friends with them. I, I think what people, I think what it really is, is I don't want to fuck you. I don't want to be your friend. And then you are broken up and then you're like, well, shit, I don't want anyone else to fuck you. I don't want anyone else to be your friend. Hey, let's me and you stay in touch so I can keep tabs on you and just make sure you're not moving on too fast. That's the the general thing or the general uh, feeling is the same with me, but the reasoning is different. So like I also go through the phase of, hey, we should be friends, but then it doesn't really work out. But I don't want to like keep tabs to make sure nobody's boning the ex-girlfriend. As soon I think as you it break just, up, you don't care if anyone's boning anyone? Uh, I guess I don't. I don't not care, but I just don't want to know. Like, I don't want to, like, keep her from doing it. I just don't want to know right. about it. I see. Um, but I think people say, oh, let's stay friends as a way of, be- like, making the breakup seem easier. So, like, right. no, 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 we're still going to hang out. It's not like I'm just never going to see you anymore because it's it's intense to be like, all right, let's break up. I'm never going to see you anymore. Yeah, it's sort of like when you're leaving, you're, like, leaving home. You hug your mom and you're like, I'll call you. It's right. like, this isn't the absolute end. I'm going <laughs> But we'll call each other and it's going to be fine. Like there's going to be, there's still contact here. But when you're breaking up with someone, the real truth is that there shouldn't be. Right. So you're leaving, you're like, hey, am I just out of your life forever? Like, oh, no, no, no. I mean, I still want to know what's going on with your, with your mom and dad. And, We're still uh, going to be friends. Yeah. Tell me about what's going on at work and stuff, you know? All right. So uh, keep in touch, eh? No, not really. <laughs> Where you, nobody's that's really not gonna, gonna happen touch. i think every, but the friendship i think if it does happen it happens down the line down the line if it does at all right down the line 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 uh so what's his if i were you if i were you i want to keep being friends with her but her actions lead me to think she doesn't want to kick it what should i do guys yeah she's she's confusing you she sucks you're not with her don't be her friend you don't have to be her friend be friends with other people that's what's gonna get you over her Hanging out with your ex doesn't help you move on past your ex. Yeah, people, the majority of people that still want to hang out is just like, oh, let's stay friends and then maybe we'll get back into a relationship with each other. The like the usually the person who gets broken up with, I feel like, wants to remain friends. Right. Oh, sh- all right. Well, yeah, let's just stay friends. Yeah. Eh. <laughs> I'm good. You know, I the reason I broke up is because I wanted to make other friends, <laughs> other girlfriends. <laughs> Other people that I want to sleep with. That don't make me feel sad and Do you mad. still want to be my friend now? <laughs> now that I'm telling you that I don't like you? Um, all right. There it is. There's the harsh truth. Toda. Tough love, baby. Sorry. Eh. Pete. <laughs> then you can say half for real and not, my girlfriend broke up with me because she doesn't like me anymore. Huh? <laughs> Yeah, Just now you're like, sad I don't give a fuck about my girlfriend. I don't return her text. <laughs> <laughs> well, ex girlfriend. Sorry, ex girlfriend. Um, the hand stands. <laughs> the hand stands. <laughs> the most turned down podcast of the year. <laughs> All right, ready? Yeah. Question number two. Do Oops. you have a name? Uh, I already said. Which one did I already say? Pikachu? Uh, yeah. Uh, Bulbasaur. All right, Bulbasaur writes Hey, guys. I'm a girl who's turning 18 soon, and my family's religion is really becoming frustrating in the relationship department, to a point at which I can't cope anymore. Basically, the rule is no sex before marriage, but also no relationships before either. 
Also, no kissing, hugging, holding hands, no boyfriends or boyfriend activities. Before you ask, these things would sort of be allowed if you were engaged or planning on marriage. I kept all of these rules because I love my family, mom and dad. They're kind, caring, and loving, which only makes the idea of disappointing them heartbreaking. On the other hand, if I were to break any of these rules, I don't know if I would be on speaking terms with my family anymore. What would you do if you were me? Thanks for the advice. Uh, Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Bulbasaur, um, first of all, what religion is like no no anything? She can't have, she can't, she can't hold anyone's (laughs) hand unless they're engaged. (laughs) Your parents don't understand how courting works. Even if they want you to... No sex before marriage, fine, I understand. I mean, I don't. That's dumb as fuck. But <laughs> but you've heard it before. I've heard it before. I like... and But you... I'm not allowed to touch a boy's hand or no boyfriend activities unless we're unless he's my husband. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you some sort of arrangement deal. It, yeah, but it's a it's a, so backwards. You don't get engaged without touching someone's hand. Unless it's an arranged marriage. So, ah. Uh, Oh, oh Come boy. On. Oh no. Oh no. Oh honey. Oh honey. <laughs> but even then, don't you touch the guy's hand? <laughs> <laughs> you do have to take his hand in you marriage. Know, there's no courtship at all? I don't know. I guess in arranged marriages they're not. Either way, what would you do if you were her? Oh, I all right. So yeah, sorry aside from picking apart your parents' religion. <laughs> uh I think you just do what anybody does. You just you lie to your parents. This girl's never heard of lying. So, okay, wait, what do you mean lying? So I I disagree with my parents' <laughs> beliefs on this, but I love them so much. Right. You know, my parents didn't want me to do anything either. They were they were kind, loving, nice people who didn't want me to skip school. They didn't want me to go out and drink. They didn't want me to smoke weed. They didn't want me to have sex. I just did it all, and I didn't tell them. There's a crazy loophole here, because your parents would be really upset if they found out you were having sex. But... Uh-huh. So tell me have- more about... Tell me more of this lying thing. What does right. that entail? So you're so all right. Pretend you're 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 my mom and you okay. don't want to have sex. And yeah, you say, yeah. Did you have sex? Did you have sex? No. Oh. Okay. And I'm then proud she- of you now. <laughs> so that way you don't tell her the truth and you, she's not mad at you. Right. Normal people lie to their parents. <laughs> I realized how irresponsible this advice is. How old are you? Maybe you shouldn't be having sex. She says I'm a girl who's turning 18 soon. Oh, I mean, I guess I lost my virginity before then. Let's not let's not act uh, advocate sex. Let's just advocate lying to your parents. Right? Shit, I don't <laughs> even know what to do. But I I think you have to understand that at a certain point you have uh, you know responsibility for your own life. And if you have different religious views, you don't necessarily just subscribe to theirs. You don't have to live your life by their standards. Yeah, lying is good because it allows you to do what you want, and then you don't have to tell your parents about it. Right, if you're very scared of uh, the reaction. Right, that way when you lie, they don't know about it. They hear what they, they think is the truth, but it's actually not the truth. I'd like That's to hear what, what you do is. in the situation, actually. Uh, I would probably be so frightened that I wouldn't tell my parents anything. But you, would you be touching um, uh like a girl's hand and I don't know. I mean, it's, it's hard for me to put myself in this like situation where I'm like, I'm, I'm, I was raised in such a strict household. I don't know how, I mean, my parents are much more conservative than I am. So in that way, I've sort, I mean, I've, I've done stuff that my parents don't like me to do. All right. So I still think you're, you're dodging the question a little bit. (laughs) I'll say that. The podcast is called If I Were You, and your exact words were, it's hard for me to be put, put myself in your shoes, so uh, yeah, I don't know, then my life was like this, you do this. And meanwhile, I told a 17-year-old to <laughs> fuck around and tell her parents she's not. The podcast is called If I Were You, and you just answered, I don't know, it's hard for me to put yourself in your shoes. In fact, I give up. I think I might put you on blast for that. <laughs> Because uh, the whole point of the show is that you do put yourself in other people's shoes. I actually, yeah. We're recording this podcast for Thursday. It's Wednesday evening. You, this is officially an, uh, it's a it's a Wednesday evening blast. A late, late, late Wednesday yep. night blast-a-thon. Just sneaking in right before, right before the early, early Thursday blast. No, I'm a fan of uh, selective truth-telling. All right. I don't know about outright lying, but uh, definitely you don't have to disclose everything. Very well. And then also you might want to consider on a larger level uh, leaving this religion. Seems like a <laughs> seems like a not good one in the grand scheme of religions. Yep. There's uh, ones that are dees, ones that are less so, and uh, the rule of no relationships before sex. 
Right. No kissing, no hugging, no holding hands, no boyfriends or boyfriend activities. It's, uh, it's a little egregious there. It's, it sounds a little restrictive. I don't Here's know. Here's if... the guiding principle that we should always be <laughs> looking at, that uh, God is not real. <laughs> there is no such thing as the afterlife. And, uh, you know. Might as well maximize happiness while you're here on Earth. I'm Rather than restricting yourself to get into a heaven that may or may not exist. Very well. So the religions that are, you know, very, very strict. Yeah. Uh, the ones that are like, don't touch a boy until you yeah. use your husband. <laughs> uh, you, I, I, the I ones that say, seem to go against the evolutionary purpose of reproduction. Cast those aside. There's other religions that are just like, eh, yeah, yeah. You Let's know. put this religion in the maybe pile. I'll put this religion on blast. <laughs> I really will. Fuck the maybe pile. <laughs> the hell no pile. <laughs> Pun not intended, because I am going to hell, according to this person's religion. If there is one, which there's not. Oh, the uh, hell. Hell, heaven. Whatever. This is all there is, man. Just me and you right now. Just Can't we just enjoy this? We at least think this is real. <laughs> Shit. Um, all right, that's all we got to do. We would do. If we were you, we would lie to your parents. Also, consider leaving your parents for good. There it is. Do you think your parents could be loving and caring and have all these strict rules? Yeah, of course. I mean, they love their daughter and they think their religion is the right religion and they want her to go to heaven and uh, all that jazz. Yeah, it makes sense. I appreciate that they're they're loving parents, they're devoted parents to their religion and their children. I think their uh, their beliefs are silly and childish, but I think that they they come from a good place. I wonder what, why some people are raised in a strict household and they grow up to be strict people and some people are like, wait a minute, this is crazy. I feel like uh, the more like the more recent generations are like, now that they have the internet, they realize that like... The world is bigger than like... Yeah. I, I, I often felt like that when I was growing up. Like, like Do you know anybody who's like, more conservative than their parents? No. and But I think what happens is a lot of the kids who, had, who came from strict households when I was growing up became like they were the wildest ones right and then but now they're like settling down and becoming strict themselves because they oh. got themselves into so much trouble because they were rebelling so hard so the strict parents cause crazy kids which then in turns causes strict parents again right because i think if you if you do go crazy and you go too hard then you're like oh my god i don't want anybody i love to do that you so learn you, it the hard way right i don't know it's i think i think being too strict is a problem but I mean, also, what do I know? <laughs> I'll never be in love or have children, so uh, take everything That's with, not a, fair, man. with a have, grain of I'm salt. Have children. The size of a freaking boulder, actually. I'm going to have children, man. What's that? I'm going to have children. <laughs> All right. Jesus. You said I wasn't going to be in love or have children. <laughs> and? And it felt like a blast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it definitely was a blast. <laughs> it should have felt like a blast. All right. It should have felt like a huge explosion. Your eyebrows should be off right now. It was yeah, that big of a it blast. Was a blast. It was a I goddamn know. backdraft. It wasn't, uh, well, it wasn't appreciated. <laughs> and in fact, I, uh, I'm going to introduce something right now, but I'd like to run your neck. <laughs> what? Yep. You're going to squeeze? You're going to choke me. No, no, no. It's not that. It's, uh, you know, I don't know if it's a, if it's a thing that it, as anyone aside from me and uh, kids from Hamden know. <laughs> oh, when you like squeeze my neck from behind or like push your it's fingers run, against it's it? It's like running your neck. Like uh, I put my palm down on yeah. the nape of your neck <laughs> and then I swipe fast like a credit card. Like, listen to this. Yeah. You hear that? <laughs> you, people at home did not hear it. <laughs> did they hear that? <laughs> I don't know. Let's hope they did. Uh, so you just you pull your hand really fast towards you yeah, like you sandpaper it almost. Yeah. it's uh, so what it is is when somebody's been uh, <laughs> been a, a a nerd or a loser for done example. something wrong in in, in a in a uh, actually I'm not sure I wouldn't really run your neck in that situation. It's sort of like you have to be proven wrong. <laughs> It's such like a distinct pain, like yeah. just a quick little burning bruise. I remember too, like uh, if you you did something wrong, like oh shit, it's like I don't even know. Uh, <laughs> I like there's a code of ethics to this running. Yeah, well, because yeah, if you if you've done something like stupidly wrong, <laughs> you um, this whole thing sounds stupidly wrong to me. Right, like I mean, now I'm trying to explain run your neck and I can't. So for this, you could run my neck. <laughs> That's like, the beauty. You just wasted everybody's time. You were stupid. I'm gonna. My run neck it. deserves to be run right now. It ran. And so, like, well, you have to. You'd have to get behind me. <laughs> you keep my neck. doing it, but I don't think people can understand what it is. I'll have to, we'll have to make a video <laughs> of a neck run. 
This is a Dave Rosenberg special. Another Dave Rosenberg special. Another reason we should have him on the show. Can't wait. All right, question number three. Yeah. Um, I think this one's from another lady. Do you have a female Pokemon name? <laughs> I don't think they don't think they have any sex. <laughs> They're androgynous. Uh, Charmander. All right, Charmandress writes. I, th- I think. Oh yeah, sure. So I've been seeing this guy for about two months. It was obs casual at first, and then once things started to heat up a little, I kind of started the so what are we conversation, and he labeled us as exclusive. And just a few days ago, he finally asked me to be his girlfriend at a party. Here's my conundrum, though. He never pays for me when we go out. He always asks for a separate bill. I feel like a guy should pay for a girl's dinner every now and then. And that's also why I was confused about whether maybe he just saw me as a friend with benefits. I'm only 21, but am I being old-fashioned? He's great. We both get along great and definitely have feelings for each other. I really like everything else about him, but I can't help but thinking that maybe he's cheap. I don't want to seem like a gold digger. I get that we're both students and have our own bills to pay, but he never even offers, and it's making me question if I'm not worth it to him. Here's where I need advice. How and when should I bring up this paying situation without being awkward or him feeling humiliated, or is this something just worth breaking up over? Love the show and the making fun part, but please don't forget to give (laughs) the actual advice after. Wow. This is great because it's a prime example of somebody needing to have their neck run. <laughs> you think so? I think I should run her neck. Really? Yeah. Really? Run her neck. I for, I for, real, I for real do. So you side I love the guy. Her, her, her options are like, when should I bring this up or should I break up with him? Yeah, those are the only two options. <laughs> or is there a chance you don't bring it up and it's fine? You don't conform to these to these awful societal <laughs> norms that, that we've put down from generations ago? Huh? Huh? <laughs> I thought you were a feminist, equal opportunity and all that jazz. Uh, here's what I'll say. Actually, here's my you go piece. first. I'm sorry. You go. For, you always read the questions and then I just talk. Yeah. And I feel like it's it's unfair because you don't get to give advice first. Well, so. here's the sticky situation. All right. This. Here's what I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, in a perfectly egalitarian society, every bill is split. But at the same time, there is this understood thing that a guy should offer to pay. And this guy does not offer to pay. And it is a little bit bothersome. And so I sort of side with the girl at this point. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. I think he should at least offer. I didn't see this coming. I agree. I mean, here's the thing. If it's me, if I'm the guy in this relationship, I do offer to pay. When I'm in a relationship, I pay, I would say, 80 to 90% of the time. And every once in a while, when I've been paying for so long and the girl's insisting, absolutely insisting that she pay. (laughs) You still don't let it because you know what? You you have rules and you have rights and you have polite manners. Being a gentleman is, it's actually not gentlemanly. If a girl's, if someone is like, please let me pay and you say, no, 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 I insist. And they say, no, really, I really want to pay. And then you say, absolutely not, I'll pay. And she says, I'll pay. That's and you when, say, like... that's enough. <laughs> I'm going to pay. And that's not a nice gesture. You took, that wasn't gentlemanly, because you took that away from her. You can be so nice that it becomes rude. Right. It's like a circle. I think the, the, the correct thing to do is, is offer, is, is, to, is try to, you know, uh, what is, you know. Run her deflect. neck. <laughs> deflect the offer once. She said, let me pay. She say. No, 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 please, I'll pay. She said, I would really like to pay. I really appreciate that then. Thank you very much. Uh, so they really like to gracious. pay. That's when you go for it. The yeah, second it, attempt. The, the second attempt, you graciously accept. However, this is, I mean, I'm going on, this is a tangent. My neck should be run. <laughs> should absolutely be run for this. Uh, <laughs> you can run my neck if you want to after the show. <laughs> uh, I think it's too weird though. So, all right. So here's what I'm saying. One, I agree with you. This guy should be at least offering to pay. But two, you can't bring it up. You can't bring it up. I think that makes you too small, petty, and like, and even, especially if you're saying you're not a gold digger, it does make you seem like you're sort of a prissy bitch. (laughs) I'm not even going to say for lack of a better word, because that's the exact word that I wanted to use. (laughs) It makes you seem like a prissy bitch. Meaning? uh, that just like I, I expect to, to be paid for. I expect to be wined and dined. Right. I don't think anyone should expect it. I think that that's like, you know, that is the way of society, and it's and it's okay to like that. But I think it's not okay to expect it. Right. 
So do you think it's okay to think it, but not necessarily to verbalize it? Yeah, I think that it's like it's it's on him, not on her to tell to right. tell him because she can't do it. Because then if he does it because of her, then it's even worse than uh, right, then it's just not, not doing a it nice at all. situation to be in, like, right? You because want you're your forcing paid for. it. You don't want like him to scowl, throw his car down, and be like, "Yeah, fine, I'll pay," and then it's like a sore subject. Yeah, because then he's, and then every time he pays from then on, even if he, it seems like he wants to. It's also kind of because you told him that one time, right. too. Right. Maybe wait it out, and then the one time he does do it, it's going to seem like a much bigger deal. If he ever does do it, you make you see you get so appreciative. You say this is so nice, and hopefully that makes him be like, "Oh, I like to make her feel like this. I'm going to do it." Here's another thing you could do: she could offer first to pay for something. Just like, right. I want to pay for you. I I wanted to take you out to dinner. Like if some he gets. Anything exciting in his life happens. You say, "I'd like to take you out for this," and then you pay. And then he's so in his mind, he's like, "I should take her out someday too." Yeah, it plants the seed of uh, chivalry in his yeah, mind, returning the favor. And then when he does, that's great. You be ex- you be excited. You be you be thankful, appreciative. And then he does. And then you guys just go back and forth, taking care of each other's bills every once in a while. And then someday you'll forget who did it first, and you'll say, oh my goodness, he was always chivalrous. <laughs> I don't even remember the time I wrote into a podcast and called him a cheapskate. And I don't even remember the time I called you a prissy bitch. <laughs> so it never happened. So you might as well not even get man- angry at me for it. Yay! It all worked out. Um, yeah, it's you can't bring it up without it being awkward or him feeling humiliated. That's Agreed. the answer. Yep. Uh, is it something worth just breaking up over? No. Wow, which which is rare. We our default is always to say break up with the person. Well, yeah, I mean, if you're 21, you will break up with him now, but <laughs> <laughs> not over this. Wait until he really fucks up. It is a weird gray area of like you want to be equal opportunity. Guys and girls are equal, but at the same time, you all it's also polite to pay if you're a guy. But it's like right. It's like reverse sexism in a way. I think there's like a new age chivalry where it's like, it's not like the olden days when it was like the guy pays. It's like, oh, this is kind of nice throwback. The guy pays. And yeah. It's like, that's cool. This is this is nice. And the girl can get something later, you know? Uh, you know what else is a good system? Like the guy pays for like the a meal and then like the girl pays for like dessert. Right. That way you're both getting something free, it, but you're also paying Guy more. pays for the meal, girls pay, girl pays for the movie. Or yeah, girl yeah. pays for the, the valet parking, if there was that at your restaurant. I live in Los Angeles now, so you guys understand. Or I'm like, always thinking about valet. <laughs> in LA, it's all valet. Or like Valet in, in the valet. If a guy pays for a meal, then he should get sex in return or something. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. <laughs> or, or even like if it just goes straight to prostitution, the guy can just pay for sex. Yeah. Yeah. Then you don't even need fucking food. You just <laughs> give money for a blow jay. That's the future. And then you're saving you're saving calories too, so you're starting to look yeah. cut. Take that, Bulbasaur's parents. <laughs> We're all getting blown for money now. <laughs> We're all going to hell now. <laughs> this is your Jack Nicholson now that you live in LA? Oh yeah. <laughs> Here's Johnny. <gasps> I guess that's pretty good. Oh, um uh, what does he say? What's Give me the bat, Wendy. Yeah. Give me the bat. Light of my life, Wendy. Um, let's take that break. 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 Uh, you said you were going to tell my mom off for uh, serving the same food. Yeah. Because my parents have been feeding you dinner. I was super appreciative of what's... I mean, when did I get here? On, on Sunday, Saturday? Sunday? Saturday, yeah, yeah. Saturday. And since then, they've been feeding me yeah um it's been doing your laundry and setting up your bed yeah and i appreciate that and i will just say (laughs) that for the past three dinners yeah there was you've kept your mouth shut um no i haven't kept it shut it's just it's been (laughs) you know there was couscous on would you say there was couscous sunday evening it's really couscous yeah and then monday evening (laughs) What did we have? Was, yeah, there was still some couscous left over. So we had so we couscous. Had my mom couscous. made chicken. And then tonight, soup. yeah, okay, that's, there was chicken. There was yeah, of course. Yeah. And then tonight there was there was pasta. There yeah. was fish. Yeah. And there was uh, carrots, cauliflower. And then, yeah. Oh, what was that? The last thing. I guess there was still a little, little bit of couscous. There left was yeah. <laughs> so I was gonna say, I was just gonna say during dinner, I was maybe gonna stand up if it's tomorrow. If there's couscous tomorrow, I was gonna stand up and I was gonna right. say Rivka. Um, <laughs> 
I see what you're doing here. You're <laughs> yeah. making it look like you prepared this big <laughs> spread, but it's clear to me that you made the couscous on Sunday and you keep on serving it as if it's a brand new fucking dish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't understand why you're trying to keep up this ruse, <laughs> ruse, rouge, this rouge, ruse, because the couscous is red. But but I don't appreciate it, nor do I respect it. Yeah, and I was trying to tell you that maybe during dinner or ever is not the best time to do it, just because right. it's such a, it's not even a thing that she, like, you're putting this narrative on it that she's trying to pass it off as yeah. food. Yeah. But uh, it's not necessarily the case. Like, we have leftovers all the time. My mom mm. makes food, and, like, it lasts for a couple of days. Right. And then she introduces a new dish, and we'll have that as, like, the main course. That's... And then, like, uh, feast off the leftovers as sides. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh... <laughs> Yeah. Do you get that? Because I'm sorry, my eyes are my eyes are glazed over. I actually, I um, started imagining the couscous tomorrow, and I slipped into a, a white rage. I will not sit at that dinner table. I think I'll make a stink. Can we edit out the part where I said rouge rouge? <laughs> Uh, everything else can stay. I just want, I don't want anyone to think that I the, said a uh, ruse ruse. The no God part, that's chill. Yeah, the, calling the, the girl a bitch, bitch part, that can fine. stay. The calling your mom um, <laughs> unappreciated or uh, a not a good chef. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. But I said rouge ruse. <laughs> And that's uh, that's a little too shameful to yeah. say. I'd also like to tighten up the part where we were talking about run your neck to make it sound like I explained it well. Yeah, just like a super quick, efficient explanation. Uh-huh. Uh, we should talk about our live shows. Oh, yeah. Uh, first of all, we have one a live podcast coming up on Thursday, January 30th. And as we said in the last episode, the theater's not very big. We actually already sold out of the pre-sale tickets, the uh, tickets that you can actually buy online. Boom, toda. Thank you guys who bought tickets. Yeah, over 100. 105 have already gone. So huh? hopefully those people all show up. But there's room in the theater for a standby line so people can come by even without tickets, wait in the standby line. And if you get there pretty much like an hour beforehand, odds are you'll have enough room to at least be shuffled in and enjoy the show as well. Very, very true. Uh, we also have two shows uh, coming up with Streeter. One in... Three shows. Oh, yeah. One in Nashville on... Monday, February 17th Yep. Uh, in Nashville at like Zany's Comedy Club, so you can go there and check that out. Uh, and then on Tuesday, the next day, we're going to be in Charlotte at uh, the Charlotte Comedy Zone, I believe it's called. Uh, you go to their website for tickets. And then the day after that, on a Wednesday, we're going to be in Syracuse at Syracuse, Syracuse University with Dan. The first two shows are just with Streeter and that last show in Syracuse with Dan. And the, the weirdest tour of all. The mid-February Nashville, Charlotte, Syracuse, back to back to it's back. <laughs> it's this is the big one. It's all I've ever wanted. Uh, so that'll be exciting. We've never performed at any. No, have we done Syracuse? No, never. Oh, all right, we never performed at any of those shows. So it'll be fun if you guys could uh, come and check that out. Please do. Um, I don't know how many fans we have in Nashville and Charlotte and Syracuse. I assume Syracuse was going to be really lovely that time. It's going to be February 19th. That's great, because so, I mean, it's already negative nine there yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. So let's see what another month into winter gets yeah. us. Yeah, I wonder how deep down the polar vortex we will go oh, no. that in six weeks of snow and blizzard-like conditions, uh, we chose the right month to move to Los Angeles is what we're trying to say. We sure did. Um, so yeah, that's it. Should we uh, try to answer that last, last, last question? Final one, one last one. Give me that last name. Um, Squirtle. What? Squirtle. <laughs> what I think is that's that? That's the way the Pokemon said it. I think. <laughs> Squirtle. Can you explain to me Pokemon real quick? I don't understand Pokemon. It's a guy who's trying to catch capture them. Do, do you think I'm a fucking loser? I knew the name of four Pokemon. Yeah, but you, you knew. That's... First of all, you knew how to say Squirtle in a specific Squirtle. Pokemon. <laughs> I do know not much about Pokemon. I. Uh, I think it's like a guy try. There's like they use these animals to battle, and you have to catch them, and then they they do battle against each other. You explained it perfectly. Yeah, and the, uh, I guess there's like a Charizard band or something. You knew shit. Charizard. <laughs> Everybody knows more Pokemon than they think. <laughs> that's the beauty. That's the beautiful part about Pokemon. Gotta catch them all. <laughs> it does have a great theme song. Yeah. All right, ready? Yeah. Charizard. Oh no, Squirtle. Squirtle. Squ- <laughs> <laughs> I'm so embarrassed even if that's the right way to do it <laughs> you're more embarrassed if it's the right way oh uh, yeah alright so 
Squirtle. Right. <laughs> I hate myself. So for the Christmas break, I returned home for a couple of weeks from university. Last week, it was time to go back. And as I had brought most of my clothes from my student hall, I had to take them back again with me. My dad's car is pretty small and the suitcase took up the whole trunk as well as the back passenger seats. Since both my parents always insist on coming back with me whenever I have to go back to university, it meant that my mother had to sit on my lap. Now, I'm not saying that I have sexual feelings for my mother. That's gross. During the ride, though, I couldn't help but get a boner. (laughs) I blame the bumpy journey. The worst part is, I think she noticed, because after the ride... (laughs) <laughs> After the ride, she looked at me pretty funny and didn't speak much. What should I do? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oedipus Rex. <laughs> this question's complex. I have edible sex. <laughs> An edible hex. Um, Jesus. Well, what did Oedipus do? Uh, he, he killed his dad. Himself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think he... Well, no, he blinded himself. He didn't kill himself. He killed his dad and fucked his mom, didn't he? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's what happens. He, like... In Oedipus, he's he's prophesied to... That one day, he's going to kill his father and marry his mother. Yeah. So they send him far, far away to another kingdom. Uh-huh. But I guess... Oh, shit. You know what? You're explaining Pokemon now. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they, like, send him away... Fuck, I wish I could remember. They like send him away and something happens because they sent him away is like their carriage gets captured and he like comes back and like someday he has no idea that he's like an orphan that was cast away <laughs> and he like wins like some battle, kills the king and marries the queen and little does he know that's his mother and he killed his dad. Oh, I see. So he inadvertently did it. It's like a self-fulfilling right. prophecy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um Anyway, when he finds out that he did that, I think he kills his mom and then blinds himself. Or maybe his mom kills herself and then he blinds himself. What I'm saying is you need to cut out your eyes. In summation, slit your eyes out. That is That'll so, change the situation. I don't know what to... Yeah, part of me is like, well, yeah, some like if there's... There's weight on your lap, like squishy, fleshy weight. Yeah. And there's like a bumpy, and there's and things are bumping and things are grinding. Then you will get a boner. My problem lies within <laughs> that you allowed yourself in this situation where your mom was sitting on your lap. Why not say, "Mom, sit on Dad's lap. I'll drive." Why not say, "I'll, I'll won't pack as much shit." Why not sit on top of the suit? There's a million things you could have done that you didn't have to be in this situation. It's uh, the weird thing. It's not in the email, but I inferred that this is an eleven-hour drive. <laughs> it's clear to me I, now than uh, more than ever that this 11 is an eleven hours. hours. And he nutted. I think he left that out <laughs> that he fucking nutted on his mom's buttocks. Oh. Oh no, mom, turn this off. There's no. <laughs> mom, this podcast is over. This is the last question. Don't turn it down. Turn it off. <laughs> We had a good run. I'm going to talk about other kids boning their mothers now. <laughs> this is rated NY, a.k.a. not for you. All right. Cheers, <laughs> Cheerio. I hope you make it to visit Grandpa Mama. All right. Goodbye. Uh, what do I do? Well, there's nothing to do at this point. You got the boner. Don't bring it up. Hope You know what you have to do is just convince yourself that she didn't notice. Yeah. She probably didn't. She just looked at you funny because she sat on your lap for a car ride. That's weird. <laughs> Maybe she didn't feel the boner. I think you felt the boner more intensely than anybody else sitting on top of you felt the boner. Oh, no, why not the other way around? Shouldn't you sit on your mommy's lap? That would have been better because even then if you if you got the boner, you would have just felt it in yourself and I don't know. Yeah, and that way if she got hot, like you couldn't, you couldn't feel her slippery little vag. <laughs> oh, no. Mom, please <laughs> fucking turn it off. If you Drive off the road at this point. Please just swerve off. The accident will make it so you you don't remember. I'm going to run your neck right now. (laughs) So now I definitely don't get it because that that, I didn't mess up. Yes, you did. That was wrong to to, to tell my mother to swerve off the road. (laughs) Worse than saying that when you sit on your mom's lap, she gets a slippery V. I don't know, man. A fucking crocodile mile down there. We'll figure it out. A slip and slide. Run your neck. You're right. Yeah. Run your eyes. Run your eyes. You fu- you know what you fucked up. You put yourself in this situation. You you deserve to have a real a sit down conversation about the boner and what it meant. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, there's not much to say about this one. It's just a funny, silly question. Yeah, what an awful situation to be in. But you're just, you're at school now. It's over. Your mom didn't notice. Forget it. Don't Never tell anyone. Have, just don't pack as much shit next time. Yeah. Don't sit on your mom's lap. Don't have her sit on your lap again. That's all. That's all we can do. <laughs> there's just learn it. Going moving forward, we've learned our lesson. Don't do this. Everybody has a secret that they wouldn't tell anyone ever. A, a, a piece of information that's in your brain that when you die will be lost forever. You have one of those. I have one of those what is it oh my god i want to know <laughs> i'm sure you have some too i don't think i do you have a secret that's so bad that only you know i'll search myself <laughs> I'll, I'll find it i'll access this little drawer i must this little memory box i must have one <laughs> I must, I must, I must have a secret so depraved. I've done some dark up. shit. Don't get me wrong. The problem is that I'm so open about it that I tell everyone. Oops. <laughs> My life is an open book. And that, that no one should is, read. And that book is smut. <laughs> I don't deserve to be an author. I'm a little dirty ass. <laughs> I'm a dirty ass. I'm an unwiped dirty ass. All right. You know what? That's quite enough for us. More than us, enough. Actually. This That's is enough. this more than our time, actually. There we go. Uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, it's our first bonus Thursday episode in a while. We appreciate you listening to it. Our last episode was actually our most listened to first day episode ever. So thanks for uh, continuing to come back and spread the word. Uh, we're still accepting uh, emails from you guys that it's that's from if i were you show at gmail.com and also custom theme song every episode opens and closes with a custom theme song that first one is from audrey scott put that in your itunes review and smoke it <laughs> actually you don't even have to smoke it as long as it's put a, that in an itunes <laughs> review as long as it's five stars <laughs> um, we try to make itunes review cool <laughs> all the cool kids are leaving a review <laughs> prove us wrong um <laughs> That first one's from Audrey Scott, a.k.a. the band 6C. This last one is from a guy who asked to be uh, remain anonymous. Wow. Yeah, because he like put some, uh, he put some radio personalities on blast, and he didn't want uh, anybody to know who it was. I can't wait to hear this. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Enjoy uh, the outro song, and thanks so much for listening. We'll be back on Monday. Nope. Okay. Never again. <laughs> Garrison Keeler or Ira Glass had a little bit of talent or a little bit of class. If Peter Sagal or Click and Clack weren't just a bunch of useless hacks, they'd not. The best show on the radio is not so much on the radio. The best program that you'll ever hear, hosted by two guys named Jake and Amir. If I were you, show.com all together if I were you show.com that's it another bonus Thursday episode in the books thanks to legalzoom.com so visit legalzoom to save on all your legal needs like wills for $69 LLCs for $99 plus filing fees and you get access to a network of legal plan attorneys for guidance remember legalzoom is not a law firm but provide self-help services at your specific direction. Just use discount code Jake or discount code Amir for more savings. Thanks, y'all.